Welcome to Good Libations, which is our program about mixology. I'm Ethel Andrews. I'm a mixologist. And as you know, our aim in this program is to make truly fine drinks without resorting to the use of mixes. And also to show that it is not necessary to have expensive barware, unusual techniques, or to be too rigid about rules when it comes to making cocktails. We know certain things are absolutely necessary, like we've often talked about proper ice storage, but I deliberately brought this today to show you that anything that will keep the ice cold is good enough. In this particular insulated bag, under certain circumstances, if we don't have a large party to serve up, can be perfectly fine for bringing ice up and putting it up near the table and storing it so that we could use it to make the drinks. At any rate, the first drink that we're going to make today is really unique. Uh, a family who lives here in Monrovia that are, you might say, well-known members of the community because they own what I personally feel is the best Italian deli in the San Gabriel Valley, the Bednar family. Um, they introduced me to this drink, and I was really taken with it for two different reasons. Number one, it uses scotch. And very few drinks, as you know, incorporate scotch because most people tend to shy away from scotch in a cocktail or a mixed drink. But this particular drink highlights it as the main ingredient. And how they actually learned about this drink is one of their neighbors across the street, Mr. Mark Gibson, was actually on a flight and sitting next to a doctor. And he talked about how this was his favorite cocktail. And of course, he was unable to have it made on the plane because one of the ingredients is elderflower liqueur. And you're not going to find that on commercial aircraft unless you're on a really, really upscale flight. And even then, I can't imagine it. And he calls this particular cocktail the doctor's orders, which is kind of a cute name, too. But again, this particular cocktail in incorporates scotch as its main ingredient. And the other ingredients are elderflower liqueur, and again, liqueur, not water, because you can get elderflower water, but you're not going to get the same result with the cocktail as you will with the liqueur or the cordial. So anyway, we're going to proceed to make this drink and then to talk a bit more about it and why it is so good. And this is a cocktail that should be used in a shaker, so we're going to go ahead and fill the shaker with ice and then put the main ingredients in. So again, our improvisational ice bucket here to show again that proper ice storage can be achieved in many different ways. We're gonna go ahead and get some ice and put it in the shaker and get it going. And we want enough ice so that it'll be nice and cold when it's shaken, but not ridiculously so. So we're going to go ahead and get busy here, and I'm going to add the scotch first. And as usual, I'm going to do my free pour. And as I always mentioned, you don't have to use top shelf liquor when you make mixed drinks. So any modest brand of liquor is fine. You don't want to use really cheap junk either off the store shelves on the very, very bottom, so to speak, but you don't have to use top shelf liquor. Top shelf liquor is for sipping. And now we're going to add the elderflower liqueur and just a bit of it because we don't want it to overpower the taste of the scotch. And elderflower liqueur, I think, has a lovely taste and it adds a dimension to this drink that I have never quite experience with scotch before, ever. And a friend of mine doesn't particularly care for elderflower liqueur. He described it as reminding him of shampoo. <laughs> but anyway, I like it, and it's really good in this drink. And the other ingredient that we put in here is lemon, squeezing in fresh lemon. And as usual, we want to hand squeeze, even if it does put some seeds in the shaker. And we want to drop the spent shell in because we want to get that infusion from the oils, both from the squeezing and from the, um, 
you might say the skin itself. And then we'll add a bit more. And then we're going to go ahead and shake this. And it is definitely not necessary or good to put any sweetener in here because the elderflower liqueur has a pleasant light sweetness to it without being overbearing. And I'm going to go ahead and shake it and pour it out and then add some garnishes and then give it a try to make sure that it is what it should be and that everything is in correct proportions because again it, it was free poured. And what I usually like to do with this particular cocktail, although this is odd with scotch, we would normally see this with bourbon, is add, just for decorative purposes, a little tiny, tiny bit of the rind because that makes it just more attractive and more appealing. And I'm going to take a sip of this drink to see if it really did turn out good. Oh yes, I have to say myself that that is excellent. And there's about the right proportion of elderflower water to scotch so that it added an extra dimension to it and made it taste more palatable to those who are not enamored of scotch and yet still enjoyable for those who really like scotch like myself. And this is accomplished with a modest brand of scotch and a modest brand of elderflower liqueur too, because there are some brands that are quite expensive by the bottle. This one is not, but it tastes just fine for the purpose of making a cocktail. And we know there are some who will go to great lengths to tell you that certain drinks should be stirred only, certain drinks should be shaken only, and usually you can do a bit of both with the same styles of alcohol and the same styles of cocktail. You don't have to be rigid about that, like the people who say that you should only stir a martini, that you're, you know, um, damaging the molecules if you shake it. Yeah, for a chemistry major, maybe, but for a person who enjoys a refreshing martini, it's perfectly fine to shake it. And that's the same thing with this particular drink, although this is a scotch drink. And it is too bad, again, that people are not particularly enamored of scotch in this part of the country. Other drinks tend to be more popular and people never go beyond Rob Roy's or basically certain other very, very simple scotch drinks like um, scotch with Drambuie, the Rusty Nail, but they're missing out on a lot by not trying other, other drinks and becoming a bit more adventurous with scotch. And what a lovely name for a drink, too, and how clever the doctor's orders. And as I always mention in my shows, we want to enjoy our libations, but we want to enjoy them in moderation. We want to show respect for our community, and we want to keep our community safe and well-spoken of. And if we're attending an event or if we're somewhere where we're imbibing custom-made drinks, we want to drink in moderation or have a designated driver so that we don't endanger other people. It's good to be adventurous. It's good to, to have fun and a good time, but not to cause our reputation and the reputation of others to be damaged. So again, we thank you for tuning into Good Libations, which is our show about mixology. And keep in mind this drink is only made with scotch, elderflower liqueur and a squeeze of lemon that's all there is to it and shaken in a in a shaker over ice so enjoy this libation and we can thank someone in our local community for introducing us to it thank you again i'm ethel andrews thank you for tuning in to good libations goodbye <laughs>